All right. Hey, guys. Uh, first off, thanks for to the people that actually watch and, you know, comment or ask questions, send me DMs and stuff. So I, I've had a lot of people over the years ask me, you know, like, ah, what kind of tools do you need? You know, what what, what can I do to, to get into this stuff that, you know, some people see me do either on car forums, you know, like I said, other videos, various different forums that I'm on. Now that I'm on YouTube, it's, you know, getting some more, a little bit more activity. So we're going to cover some of those tools so you can see what it is to do, you know, metal work, metal fabrication, uh, welding, whatever classification you want to think it is, right? So let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, first off, anybody can do anything in a garage. I've got a two and a half car garage. It's kind of hard to see it with the car sitting up over here on the left hand side. Um, you need electric, you need good lighting, you know, all these things are just the basics of garage. They're not exactly tools. Uh, first thing I want to talk about though is uh, whether you choose to do hand tools, electric tools, or pneumatic tools, uh, I'm going to highly recommend you get a good air compressor, right? If you're going to be doing, you know, something like this, right? If you're just doing, you know, some stuff on the side, you're just doing some basic automotive stuff, you know, you run some impacts or whatever, uh, you can get away with a small 30 gallon compressor. I've even seen some people do it with pancake compressors. Uh, they just they, they really the pancake compressors don't have the capacity. So uh, a 30 gallon Craftsman, you know, oiled, oilless, doesn't matter really. Um, if you do just get good filtration with your air system, no matter what type of compressor you use. Um, I myself just upgraded to this one a few months ago. Uh, it's a 18.5 CFM. Hopefully the camera picks it up there. Uh, this one was about $1,400 and I upgraded to it because my uh, air tools require a lot of air and the compressor was just running consistently. Before this, I had a Husky uh, 60 gallon compressor. It was 10 or 11 CFM um, and it really didn't put out that much because I'm not running half inch lines. But, uh, you know, I put out good, good CFM and I used that thing for 10 years, right? And I did powder coating in my garage. Uh, you have to sandblast all the parts. Sandblasters are in the corner. Um, and that is an air hog. So, you know, I should have had a compressor like this to begin with, but I just didn't have the money at the time. I actually started powder coating with a 30 gallon compressor to begin with, uh, even sandblasting parts. It's just, you have to let the compressor stop and cool down and you're not supposed to let it run more than two thirds of the time. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much of that stuff. Do your research if you're going to pick out a compressor. Uh, there's a lot of information out on the internet plus YouTube that you know tells you what the CFM ratings and you know what it works What's the duty cycles you're supposed to do so you can read up all that, but I highly recommend air tools uh, It makes life just so much easier uh, If you're just doing small projects though a 30 gallon would work a 60 gallon husky uh, That was a $500 compressor that I bought 10 years ago. Uh, it was on a Black Friday special I think uh, that compressor is still being sold by Home Depot. It's a different color, different, uh, it looks a little different, but it's still 460 or something now without it being on sale. So, you know, they come down in price and that's a really solid compressor that, you know, did me well for 10 years, you know, really putting through the abuse. So, uh, get yourself uh, a good air compressor. If you're going to invest in tools and invest into, you know, doing this type of work, you really do need to do it. Um, aside from that, you need to make sure you got good electrical. Uh, I myself, I've got two 220 outlets, right? Two, 220s right um my air compressor is on a dedicated circuit it's not plugged in all the time and then i swap between my welder and my garage heater and i got a 220 volt uh electric garage heater i live in the midwest it gets kind of cold here um and it, that works i probably should have gone a vented gas um unit instead would probably have been more efficient uh this takes a little while to get the garage up to you know 60 degrees to be able to work in here but you know it does the job so aside from that, that's the overall garage. Let's get into just some basic tools and you know what you can start off with, right? Uh, anybody can start off with some simple hand tools, right? Uh, here are just some regular hand shears. Um, I have a, I believe that's a right hand cut, right? So when you cut, it's using the throat there to push the metal off to one side so it makes a nice right hand cut. Maybe it's left hand, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, and then there's a straight cut shears. Right? Uh, these work, they will cut sheet metal. Um, you can't cut anything bigger than that, but you know it'll cut sheet metal just fine. And I do this for you know, small trimming all the time. Uh, just beware, it's a workout for your forearm if you're gonna be cutting lots of sheet metal, right? Um, 
pretty much it for the hand tools, except for like some hammers and other things that you could deal with. Right, we'll get into you know some of that later. Uh, so let's move into how you can cut metal. Right, um, a cutoff wheel and a die grinder. You can put a different attachments on it and different things, or you can work with some electric tools. You got a angle grinder. You can even get an attachment to put it on a electric drill or battery operated drill. I, I don't recommend doing it that way. It's uh, just on how thin these blades are. If you twist it while you're doing the cutting, which you can easily do with a the 90 degree angle of holding a drill, you can shatter that uh, that disc and really do some damage. Uh, it's much easier to do with an angle grinder. Plus, it's got a lot more power. It's actually built more for that. Uh, but for cutting tools. Get yourself a cutoff wheel. Uh, I got this one here. You're gonna see kind of a theme with this uh, this video. A lot of uh, Harbor Freight tools and a lot of Eastwood, and I get a lot of cracks from the guys on the forums about I should be sponsored by Eastwood because my garage it, it looks like the Eastwood company threw up in my garage, and I am not sponsored by them. But hey, Eastwood, if you see this, you know, send me free stuff. I'll gladly accept it. I love love your tools. You know? but. Uh, $20, that's, a, that's all that was from Eastwood, or not Eastwood, uh, Harbor Freight. $20 for that. Uh, I've had this one a little over 10 years. Um, maybe maybe 20, right? Actually, it is 20. Yeah. I've had it since before I moved into this house. Um, and it's lasted. The only thing that, that you need to do is make sure you take good care of it. Put some oil in the uh, inlet and keep it lubricated. Have a good uh, filtration system on your air, airlines and it'll last and that has lasted and you can still get these same model they look a little different you know they've updated it over the years but for 20 bucks it's not a bad deal uh, same thing with this uh, quarter inch uh, it's a die grinder with a sanding wheel attachment on it with a rotary disc so you know that was a, like $20 or something and you can get them even cheaper with all the coupons that Harbor Freight has so hopefully if you guys are watching this in the United States you've got a Harbor Freight somewhere near you right um, aside from those tools I use the angle grinder a lot to cut metal with, especially if I'm doing large large cuts right it's a lot faster um, than doing it with a small three inch cutting wheel you can do it with a four or five inch wheel um, the angle grinder itself, you know, electric tools, you've got uh, different uh, consumables you can put on it. They all have their different uh, attachment points for the, for the arbor or chucks, whichever you want to call it. Um, so we can grind stone, grind steel. Uh, I use a flap disc a lot for grinding down metal, cleaning it, prepping it, doing surfacing. Um, you've got different types of wire brushes you can get attached to it for stripping off paint, rust, scale. Uh, this is a finer brush of it and it allows you to use the that type of setup versus you know, this type where you're sanding it this way. So many different options you get for it. These are all pretty cheap. So you get $20 for these tools. This is about $60. Bucks. Uh, it's a Ryobi. I'm not uh, team green or team red or any of that crap. It's It was on sale at Home Depot. It was a good price. It, bought it and it's lasted many many years um, so get yourself a good angle grinder get your different attachments for it. the consumables are you know pretty pretty cheap you know eight dollars uh, a lot of these came from harbor freight you know really cheap just be careful with your wear eye protection and stuff because the stuff will throw slag and you know grit and little bits of wire wheel um, cutting metal back to that as well Getting back to that, you got a couple different options you can do. This is called an air nibbler, and that is from Eastwood. Uh, this is a phenomenal tool. I love it. The only problem that I can complain about it is, is it leaves these uh, little chunks of metal. Uh, it, it flies around the garage like crazy. Uh, it ends up in my boots, and then I track it in the house and you know scratch it up my my floors and stuff. So I try not to use this because, uh, yeah, it uh, leaves a lot of waste on top of it. Uh, but this is great because it allows you to make intricate curves in the metal. You can pretty much cut any design you want in the metal. It's not a uh, straight cut tool. Uh, onto a straight cut tool, you have a shear. Uh, this one is again by Eastwood. Uh, this works great. Uh, it is only really used for straight cuts. Uh, you can't really 
you can get it to turn a little bit here and there, but it will not do a 90 degree cut in the middle of a panel. It just, it won't do it. It's not what it's meant for. Uh, it's just meant to zip off, zip off, you know, a rough cut. Um, and it actually does this to whatever you're working on. Um, so leaves a lot of excess crap. Um, Moving along though, um, you have an air body saw. Um, this is from Eastwood as well. I bought one from Harbor Freight. It was completely gutless. Uh, that was like a $20 tool, and honestly, it was worth that, wasn't even worth that 20 bucks. Uh, this one was about 60 or 70 from Eastwood, but it's got lots of torque, lots of power. Uh, really good for making cuts where you can't get into you know, a corner you know, with an angle grinder or you know, the cutoff wheel. So this is really great for that purpose. You know, just be sir, just be careful. It's like with a sawzall, you got to get the the cut, which you're cutting right up against the guard, right? Um, now that really covers all the things you can do. Hi, right, let me back up. There's another way of doing it. You know, there's a manual version of cutting steel. This is a throatless shear, and this is what I actually use the majority of the time to cut metal. You, if you watched my previous videos, you saw me using this to make the transmission patch. Um, I use this consistently in the last two or three years. Uh, it's a throatless shear. You can make curved cuts in it. You can do different designs. Um, and it's, it's super phenomenal. It's super sharp. I've actually not had to change the, uh, the shear on it or sharpen it. And like I said, I've used it a lot over the last two or three years and to me this is this is even better than like the nibbler or the shears uh, and it's a lot faster than doing it with a cutoff wheel and of course no mess either um, really great tool this was 80 or 90 dollars i don't remember maybe it was 120 somewhere in that range uh, again it's an eastwood tool you can look this up on eastwood.com for any of the things that i'm uh, discussing here and you can uh, see the pricing or the current pricing for because some of these tools like I said I've had for 10 20 or even 30 years in some cases and the prices have changed the tools are a little updated etc All right, so that's for you know cutting metal now you're gonna get into some of the grinding of metal and you know uh, Shaping etc surfacing so we had talked a little bit about this uh, Thigh grinder with a cutoff or sanding disc on it. You know, this is very useful $20 uh, I use it for a lot of the finished sanding that's going on. Uh, I used to use the angle grinder with the flap disc attachment. Uh, but the problem with this is it's a very large surface area. Uh, it's not meant to get into some tight spaces and it removes a lot of material very quickly and you can accidentally remove too much very quickly. Um, especially since you look at the surface of that, there's a wide variance of where you can get, you know, stuff sanded down so I've actually been using uh, a Dynafile or a mini belt sander whichever you want to classify it no I do have one that I got from Eastwood um, I thought this was going to be a great investment I think I spent 69 or 79 dollars for that uh, used it two or three times went through about 20 belts in that two or three times and I have not used it since uh, it's not a very good design. They have some updated version of this. I don't have those. I haven't tried it. Um, but this one itself, uh, it's a short belt. I don't remember what the size is. I think it's 12 inch belts. I don't remember. I have to bring up the tape measure. Uh, but the design flaw on this that I didn't like is it's got a very tapered edge on the roller at the very end of it and it allows the belt to walk left and right very easily and then the belt just shreds. Um, wasn't worth the money. So I actually found this one on Amazon. It is a Onyx by Astro and it's had a lot of good reviews and I think I paid $160 for it and it is worth every penny. Um, this tool is phenomenal as far as how quickly it can remove any type of material. Uh, the belt lasts forever no matter what type of brand you buy. Uh, I actually, actually recommend these guys uh, red label abrasives um, their belts last forever they do a lot of cutting uh, it does leave a mess but it, it you know it's a workhorse and it cuts down metal really quickly a lot of the weld prods that uh, you need to get, you know, surface down it just cuts through them pretty quickly 
So really great tool. I cannot speak highly enough about it. Again, it's a Onyx by Astro. Again, it had a lot of good reviews, and I've been using this for the last year or so, and it has been phenomenal. Um, everybody's probably seen these in just about any, any car show. It's just a uh, ear chisel, right? And it has its uses. Um, but this is what I would call, call a bull in a china shop, and I've had this one 30 years. I usually use this on my... Uh, 67 Mustang restoration that I did. I started when I was 14 and I didn't that till I was like 18 or something, but I use this, you know, pretty much consistently the whole time. And it's a, it's a great tool, but as you can see, I don't even have an air inlet on it because I haven't used it in forever. Uh, instead, get over here. I've been doing the manual version of it. And I got this again from Eastwood. I don't remember what it's really called. I call it a body blade or, a, you know, a seam buster or something. There's a part number for it. Uh, I think it was like twenty dollars. Um, I can't recommend this tool enough. I use this ninety percent of the time to bust through spot welds. Uh, even sometimes cutting out old panels because it does have a blade edge on it. It's not sharp. You know, you can't really cut somebody with it, but it will do damage to steel, uh, especially sheet metal. Uh, really good tool. You just you know get the edge into a. a your spot weld and hit it on the back side of the hammer or use the blade section of it and you hit it on the back side here and, and it just bangs right through all that stuff a lot more precise a lot more control than you know using your bull the china shop type of tool uh, great thing there um, speaking of spot welds so get yourself a good center punch you know they have the manual punch versions i like this one's because it's got spring loaded uh, so you can set the tension on how hard you want to you know, leave your indentation for your drill bit. Um, really great. That's a hand me down for my dad. I've had that in 20 or 30 years, but I've still seen these, you know, in, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot and even on Amazon, they sell them about 10 bucks. Uh, spring loaded version, highly recommended. Uh, spot weld cutters that you put in your drills. Um, this one here is uh, a bit that I bought from Eastwood. It was about 40, $40, I think, 40, maybe 49 or 50 bucks. Uh, I used it. Really good, really sharp for the first hundred or so uh, spot welds that I cut. And then, you know, I didn't use enough oil and it didn't keep it cool, especially when you're using, you know, old cars like uh, you know, 60s and 70s cars, there's a shit ton of spot welds in them. Uh, so I dulled the tip of it. It does not cut very well, but for 50 bucks, I don't recommend it. Um, I'm actually going to recommend these cheapo $5 spot weld cutters from Harbor Freight. Um, great value. Uh, they have basically two tips to it. So this side is reversible. You can actually put this in your 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 vise. Uh, I think it's a reverse thread. And you spin it off and you flip it around and you retighten it back up. And then you have another spot weld cutter on the same thing. Uh, the only thing that sucks about them is the tip wobbles. So you got to be careful. It doesn't jump all over the place. It it can you know cause you some damage when the drill just jumps out of your hands. And it does do it, especially at high RPMs. But for five bucks. I don't remember if they're five bucks a piece or it's five bucks for a two pack, but you know, really great. You get yourself you know a ten of these and you know, equated that, and you can get twenty to fifty spot welds with this, especially if you're you know not overheating the tool. Uh, we're gonna talk about hammers real quick. Um, I always recommend having a hammer with a wooden end of it. I use this all the time to hold two pieces of metal together while I'm welding, right? Because the the wooden handle won't really catch on fire, and then of course you won't uh, you know, complete a, a circuit with the, the the weld. So having you know a wooden handle is really good. It you know helps you get two pieces of metal lined up, especially if there's some tension there. And don't cry welders. I know that you shouldn't be welding two pieces of metal that don't match up without having to force it. But you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. You know, make safety stuff. Make sure you got good glasses. Uh, get yourself some decent work gloves. You know, I buy these crappy ones from. Home Depot and in Harbor Freight, but uh, uh, be careful with the polyester. I think it is the ver polyester versions. They'll, you know, just sparks will set it on fire and burn holes in it, right? And it's not even worth wearing the glove for it then because your your hands not gonna catch on fire. But if you're wearing the glove and that catches on fire, it's gonna burn your hands. And I, I've done it where it burnt my knuckles. You can see here it's burnt through on this pair. I need to replace it. But uh, get yourself a nice set of you know heavy duty work gloves. These are my actually TIG welding gloves because they're. Know, a little bit more dexterous so you can you know 
feed your wire in a little easier um, and they're a lot easier to work with than you know the big cowhide you know leather gloves that go up to your elbows for you know mig welding but you can use these for you know grinding off stuff um, doing a lot of metal stuff uh, get yourself a face shield uh, face shield is very nice keeping the sparks out of your face um, even wearing safety glasses stuff can still get behind the glasses so sometimes wearing a shield in the glasses is, is well worth it uh, a shaded pair of lenses if you do like plasma cutting and stuff like that that's like grade eight on the scale i don't remember what the the helmet ratings are but you know that that one's eight so it shields your eyes for it uh, and then of course you know different types of safety glasses with uh you know side side protection um getting into more metal shaping harbor freight has its value you know some things are super cheap and they are worth what they're what the the money that you put into it and sometimes you get a lot of value for the low cost sometimes you have to spend the bigger bucks to get a better tool though <clears throat> that's where eastwood and woodwood fab and a bunch of the other manufacturers that make a lot of these tools come in but for twenty dollars i got uh four hammers there's two more that are like this that are <clears throat> by the car that i was working on earlier uh, but these two hammers plus four dollies all came from a kit in harbor freight for twenty dollars and i don't know if it was with a coupon or not but you know twenty dollars twenty dollars maybe it was thirty with coupon or thirty before the coupon i don't know but you know it's got all these different shapes which you're going to need when you're doing metal fat and especially if you're a person that's learning it you're gonna you know screw some things up and you need different different faces uh, different impact points this one's got a, a pick head to it uh, this one's a reversible it's got a flat edge that's circular on one side and it's got a rounded edge so that you can shape something with a contour in it uh, square edge and I believe that's the other two got some different heads and different different features um, this one is actually a door skinning hammer um, it says Maddox, but this is, I believe, from Harbor Freight as well. I think this was 20 bucks for this. It came with a dolly and a spoon for skinning door handles. And you can kind of see this better here. That was what I was surfacing in my last video, if you were watching, because uh, the face kind of looked like that beforehand. And when you hit metal with a hammer and a dolly, and if they look like that, all you're doing is you're transferring that into your metal. So you always got to surface it and that's the only downside of these you know twenty dollar hammers and dollies that you get from uh, uh, Harbor Freight is that their tool steel is a little bit lower quality or not a little bit but a lot lower quality and the faces uh, all get marred up very 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 easily and you gotta surface them a lot more uh, the higher grade hammers they may cost uh, twenty to forty to sixty dollars themselves but then they don't get marred up as easily so this is a Fairmont hammer. Uh, I got this, I believe, from Eastwood. This was forty to sixty dollars for this hammer, right? So you can see the big price difference. One tool, forty to sixty dollars, versus four hammers and four dollies for twenty, right? Uh, this one is a, a special tool. It's got a shrinking head on it. So what you do is you you hit the the metal with a dolly on the backside, and you just rotate what you're doing here when you hit it, and it ends up shrinking the metal for you right um, very useful if you have to shrink something in the middle of a panel the only thing is it's going to leave a lot of marks and, and uh, mar up the metal a lot right uh, but very good hammer and it's got its uses uh, obviously you got the different dollies and different shapes i bought some one off there's a couple more that i've got with the other two hammers by the car these are very heavy uh, that's about a pound and a half maybe two pounds but this was a dolly I got from Eastwood. Uh, it's got some different contours and shapes on it. This one's real nice, and this one's probably about three pounds. Uh, very heavy. Uh, really good for you know doing stuff. And again, this dolly, I think it was twenty or twenty-five dollars just for that one. Maybe it was forty. Same thing there. Uh, this spoon came with that door skinning set, so it came with that hammer. Uh, really good for you know slapping steel or you know, getting into a hard hard to reach spot. Um, but this is really if you have an oil can effect on a panel and you need to slap it out and put some tension back in the metal. Same thing with this one. This one's uh, about four pounds. Uh, heavier than most hammers. Uh, 
This one's made by Martin. I don't remember where I got this from. I've had this one for many years, but uh, really good for you know stretching long panels like hoods or uh, door skins, etc., for getting things back in a shape. Um, you know, that was about forty to sixty dollars for this, right? So you're going to spend some money on some of these things. Sometimes you just need to spend twenty bucks and you get yourself a, a good set that'll work with it. If you're just doing some basic metal fab and you just need to, you know, bang some things out and straighten it out. $20 Harbor Freight, you can't go wrong. If you need something more specific, you might spend $20 for one tool or you know, 40 to 60 for one tool, but if you buy it and you take care of it once, put it in your toolbox, you'll have it for the next time around. So, uh, moving along, uh, obviously if you're working with metal, you need to get yourself some welders um, or a welder. Uh, I've got two, I've got a TIG welder and I've got um, a MIG welder, and again, these are by Eastwood. Uh, they've got great customer support. They make really good tools for the price. Uh, they're really geared towards that DIY type of guys. Uh, they also do a lot of videos, you know, explaining how their tools work and the different things that you can do. Uh, kind of speaks to me, so I'm I'm more than happy to give them my business. So uh, this is a 110, 220 TIG welder. Uh, really good. Uh, could you get a Hobart or Lincoln? or Miller for about the same price or more and have a better product? Probably, in fact, most definitely. But for this, I think this was $400 for this unit. Um, it came with you know the pedals and all the tools and the basic consumables get, get you going. Um, definitely worth the money, can't complain. It's been rock solid, I've not had an issue with this welder. Uh, I've also got a plasma cutter down here as well that I bought from Eastwood. It's See the label there. It's a VersaCut 20. Um, I don't remember how much it was, but uh, probably about $200, maybe a little less. Uh, but you know, getting the plasma cutting, it'll cut eighth inch steel, pretty pretty good. Uh, I think I can get. I think I've cut up the quarter inch plate. Um, you just have to turn the regulator up and get more air supply, and and it's not a clean cut, but it, it will cut through it. And when you're trying to cut quarter inch plate, you know, it's not easy. It's not not quick. So. Uh, not a bad investment. I do use it. Um, when I do have to use it, it was worth the money. Here's my uh, MIG welder. This is a 220 unit. Um, you can get these in 110. They do make smaller versions of it. It's just what size can you weld. Um, it's been pretty solid device. I've only had an issue with the gas solenoid getting stuck where you pull the trigger and the gas doesn't shut off until you physically shut the unit off. Um, Eastwood was great with the support. They overnighted the parts for it the next day. You know, warranty was great. The customer service is phenomenal. It's not like with uh, Harbor Freight. I had one of their welders. Uh, I needed to replace the torch on it, called them up, and it was worse than dealing with most other uh, support groups. Uh, in fact, if I ever have to call uh, Harbor Freight support, I'd rather just throw the tool in the garbage and go buy a better unit, right? So not the case with Eastwood. I can't speak highly enough about them. And again, that's why a lot of guys joke that you know I should be sponsored by Eastwood. Um, but aside from the welder, you got some basic things that you need: um, spoons, copper spoons, the you know close up gaps. If you don't have something, you know you can't get the the, the gap to get the right spot. Um, you saw this one, I think, in my previous video. If you watched it, you know it's got a magnet uh, so you can hold it in place. Um, just a piece of copper works good. Just make sure you got something on. Wearing gloves for the handle because it will get hot. Um, Clicos, you need to hold the metal in place. We'll get into that in a little more detail. These are uh, 316 Clicos. Again, got this from Harbor Freight. They're not Harbor Freight, uh, Eastwood. Sorry. Um, came with a good number of Clicos, the tool itself, uh, panel clamps, you know, good value. I think it was. $69 or something, it was still, it was worth it. Could you get it cheaper on Amazon? Sure. Um, quality, eh, that leaves the desire. It's again, cost first value. Um, then there's, you know, you need brushes, all right? Um, these aren't for my TIG welder. I keep these all separate so I don't contaminate anything like my aluminum or steel when I'm TIG welding. Uh, I got these panel clamps from Eastwood. I think they were like $20 or something. Uh, I don't recommend them unless you're changing out the wire to a thicker wire, thicker wire to close this gap up because otherwise you're trying to bridge a gap that wide. And it's they hold their value or they they have their place. Uh, I just 
I prefer to try to get a close butt weld where I don't have to have something like that and just use magnets. Right? Um, moving along though, some more of the specialty tools. Um, again, some Eastwood stuff. You can tell by their blue. So this top piece here is a metal brake. Uh, I don't remember, I think it's three feet it's 30 inches. I don't remember the exact width of it, but really great because it can create sharp, sharp 90 degree bends or any degree bend you need, or create a soft bend depending on how you set up the fence. Uh, it's super heavy. That's why I'm not dragging it out. And it's also another one of my tools that has to be mounted in the vise. So, um, yeah, it's just super heavy. I'm not dragging it out. It's like 60 pounds, but really great. For years, I just used my 100 year old vise and just bent metal over inside the jaws and that worked and if you're doing something you know just minor stuff you know onesie twosie here and there that's perfect for it um, but if you're going to start bending metal and you need it to be precise you need to have direct curves say you're making a patch panel where you got a style line or something you want something like this to be exact or precise so you're not just loading up body filler all over to recreate the the style line uh, I believe that was like $80 uh, don't quote me on some of this, guys. You can you can look it up on Eastwood itself. But again, really good tool, and and, and it's been flawless. I've had, had no issues with it, and I've done a lot of work with it. Uh, below that is a, a bead roller, and it's got a nice uh, large throat, so you can do some decent sized panels with it. This is the non motorized version. This one's a couple of years old. I uh, bought this before they came out with the motorized versions. So the only complaint that I have with this is it's really difficult to put a bead in a panel when it's just you and you got to operate the crank and control the metal at the same time. Um, so they do make an add-on to make convert these from manual to an automatic. And I, I may do that at some point in the future, especially when I start getting into uh, fabricating more panels that, that I want to put beads in. Uh, but this was, uh, I don't know, 100 to 250 somewhere in that range uh, came with all the dies a uh, super great tool and for the price point I, you couldn't beat it at the time when I went looking for it so uh, highly recommend it if you if you actually want to get into doing some uh, decorative art or you want to create your own floor pans or things like that you know this is this is good good stuff uh, again some more Eastwood stuff I got a shrinker stretcher over here for uh, shrinking and stretching metal. Um, you can kind of see inside here the jaws. So this stretcher, how it works is when you pull the handle down, it takes and pinches the metal, holds it tight, and then it spreads it apart. And then the reverse for the shrinker where it does this. And it works on the outside edges of metal. It won't do uh, you know, a shrinker stretch inside the middle of a, a panel. It can only work on the outside edges, but really useful. Uh, I think these were 60, I think it was like 120 or 30 because it was a pair that I bought at the time. They make them now where you can just buy one and then you take apart the jaws and you flip it and it can do reverse. Um, I like being able to sw swap very quickly in it so I actually was happy I bought the, the upgrades to it. Or getting both per se. Uh, up here I've got a very cheap um, English wheel. Kind of hard to see it. I got piece of pipe here in the way um my wife found this for me i don't know where she got it uh but she told me it was like 40 bucks you know that's that's a steal for that uh it's not the greatest quality uh there's a lot of play in both uh, the lower die and the upper when you when you put them in there uh but it does get the job and it allowed me to learn how to do english wheel in my garage versus you know playing with it some other shop and you know getting 20 minutes on it and then not being able to touch it for another year uh this is uh, only able to be mounted to a vice. Uh, they, you know, Eastwood and Wood, Woodward Fab and a lot of those places they make English wheels. Are, they start at like two or three hundred dollars, and then you have to mount it to your your uh, workbench, or you have to buy a stand that's another couple hundred dollars to be able to use it. So for forty dollars or whatever that was, and it came with the wheels. Pull this open here. So it came with all the wheels for it, right? So here's your upper wheel, and here's the lower, lower wheel of dies, and it came with a you know a lot of set of it. And these are actually really good grade tool steel, which I was surprised for when I heard about the price. Um, do you need one? Do you need an English wheel? Well, 
If you're just doing some minor stuff, no. If you're going to start fabricating your own panels and you want to start making some intricate designs and curves, uh, I highly recommend you get it. Uh, you can probably find this on the internet somewhere if you did a Google search. I, I probably should have done that for you guys, but sorry, I didn't, didn't have the foresight to do it. Uh, over here, I've got the dies for my uh, bead roller. So it come it came with a set. Um, see here, you got uh, different types of beads that you can roll into it, uh, different thicknesses and depths. Uh, it's also got the ability to flange metal, uh, tip over dies, uh, many different things that you can do with a bead roller. So it's not just you know, putting beads in a panel. Um, touch about just some basic tools again. Uh, a bench mounted belt sander is a huge boon to you know metal fitment and getting things you know done right. Um, this is from Harbor Freight. I think it was forty dollars. Now it's a cheapo belt sander. The the side disc, the orbital one, is garbage. I, I can't use it anymore. Um, but I use the crap out of the actual belt sander. Um, if you watched my transmission to tunnel uh, video, when you saw me moving in and out of the camera during the time lapse, that was because I was walking over here and I was, you know, just sanding down metal, taking off a sixteenth of an inch here, an eighth of an inch there at a time to get, you know, a nice fitment so I can get a close, you know, butt weld. Um, so I use this thing all the time. Uh, and again, $40 from Harbor Freight, I probably could have, uh, you know, Depending on the coupons, I don't remember what the price was. Uh, I've also got a nice, uh, you can see it from over here, uh, right next to the welder, or the air compressor is a, a, a bench mounted uh, bench grinder. Sorry, having a little aphasia here. I can't remember what some of this stuff is called. Uh, th that was $40, right? And I use one side dedicated for my tungsten, and one side I just, you know, for whatever, but one side's just for my tungsten. And I've also got a uh, a polisher or a buffer wheel uh, or a buffer motor set up just like that. Uh, it's you know, packed away so I keep all the stuff clean. So, wrap it all up here. What do you need? Well, you can get away with some of the basics, right? Just hand tools, some a drill, an angle grinder. You know, a basic welder. Um, I, I welded for years with a 110 Craftsman welder. You know, my brother still has that thing, and it's worked forever. Uh, and it gets the job done, especially if you're just welding sheet metal, right? And you don't need anything super powerful. Um, many years, I used, you know, just hand tools to cut metal. And then I was like, I got tired of <laughs> working on my forearm. So I got well, upgraded to a cutoff wheel and then to, a, you know, uh, a cutoff blade on a uh, angle grinder and then you know I was tired of you know creating dust and you know shit and taking 20 minutes to cut you know a foot panel you know get out the air nibbler or a shear and zip right through it how it's a throatless shear so you can start off with some basics um, honestly if I had to equate to all the tools that I have in my garage including my welders and the air compressor I'm still about five to six thousand dollars in tools and that's over the course of 30 years right some of the tools I don't have from 30 years ago but you know I use them for a long long time right um, the previous air compressor five hundred dollars lasted over ten years right and my brother still has that compressor I just gave it to him when I upgraded to this one and it still works he's putting it in his garage right uh, so I know that it was worth the investment it was worth that 500 bucks all day long this these $20 part, these $20 tools, worth every penny plus some, and you can't beat it. Um, this tool I foresee being able to use for the next 10 years, um, and it was worth $160 all day long, right? Uh, some of the other tools, was this one worth 60 bucks? No, definitely not, right? In fact, that's that's scrap metal or you know goes in the garbage. You know, it's just taking up space in my toolbox. Um, did I need to get the the shears uh, at the time it was a, a nice investment a, a nice upgrade for me but uh honestly i don't use it anymore right so uh, i learned that i could only cut straight pieces with it and it was a pain in the butt and changing out the shears every time i dulled it or jammed it up it was you know a pain pain in the butt so that's why you can see i don't have the air inlet in it anymore because i don't use it i stole it for another tool that i was using i still will use the nibblers from time to time because i can 
do 90 degree turns or a nice rounded turn really easy with this tool. Uh, so it has its value. I just, you know, got to clean up the, the little metal shavings when I'm done. All right. Uh, Twenty dollars for this panel buster. I can't speak enough about it. Okay? So you can start off with maybe a hundred dollars in some of these tools and start doing metal fab, uh, doing welding, getting getting stuff going. Obviously, you're going to spend a little bit for a welder and you know go from there. But uh, look at what you need to do. Figure out what your project is if you're going to be reusing that tool later on, right? So say like the welder. If you're actually going to get into welding, then don't buy a cheap shit welder buy a good welder that's going to last you several years until you want to upgrade not need to upgrade right um if you're just going to be you know cutting metal here and there and, and welding them back together and it's the only things you're going to be doing for a year then yeah you can get a, get away with a harbor freight or you know craftsman or some other low buck uh welder and you know tools to get you going so my whole setup there, five to six grand in just metal stuff, right? And obviously we're not talking about automotive tools like wrenches and sockets and, you know, all that crazy stuff. And, man, you're talking a lot more money. But, you know, just doesn't do some metal fab. It's not a lot of stuff. Honestly, you can shape a lot of metal with a ball-peen hammer against your vice. And I still all the time do it, even though this is not a nice, smooth work surface. It still does the job and it still works. That's mainly because I've been using that vice for 30 years and I know what I can do with it. All right. Um, do you need anvils and crazy tools, you know, $400 English wheels? Well, if you're going to do this all the time, sure. But if you're just doing it here and there, the answer is no. So if you have any questions about any of the tools that I, I showed or how to use it or what's good, if, you know, one of these tools, you know, is better than the other, let me know. I think I pretty much covered it in my description of them, but if you want more detail, uh, hit me up in the comments, send me a message, uh, you know, hit like or you know, subscribe to my channel if you would. I, I don't care about pimping the channel, but, uh, you know, it's nice to know that, that I'm adding value here and people are, you know, getting some, getting some value out of my information other than just listening to me ramble. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, 